take a pinch of the Discovery Channel, toss it into a blender with the Food Network, and you've got the melting pot, where American chefs compete to transform exotic ethnic dishes into upscale restaurant fare. The judges who'll decide the winners aren't famous, but they know their homeland's cuisine better than anyone. What can they say? Everything's good. It's amazing is how they can turn a simple Hmong food into something that we we all agree that in modern American food, this will go well. I'm Timothy Lynch. Join me as I introduce American chefs to the vibrant home cooking of some of this country's most obscure ethnic groups. The result is a fusion of fun, friendship and food that is the very spirit of the melting pot. Merced, California, home to one of Southeast Asia's most fascinating cultures, the mountain people of Laos, the Hmong. The Hmong began arriving in the United States in 1975. They were forced to flee their nation because they had sided with the Americans during the Vietnam War. But whether in Laos or in Merced, their love for traditional home cooking remains central to their cultural identity. And helping me put it all together are two Hmong community leaders, Sal and Tubi. Hi, guys. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. Hmong food, what is it? Hmong food is lots of rice, lots of pork, and lots of vegetables. There's spices, there's green there's onion, garlic, there's garlic, ginger. there's ginger, there's uh, cilantro, all grass. mixed together. I've got three top Santa Barbara chefs who want to get to know everything that there is about Hmong food. Any suggestions? Well, we're going to have a Hmong barbecue at a ranch. Hmong barbecue? Different than American barbecue? Extremely a little different. Let's invite them to that. Now, these guys are really at the top of their game. There's John Pettit from the Seagrass Restaurant, Jason Tooley from the Savoy on State Street, and Charlie Fredericks, celebrity chef for the stars here in Santa Barbara. I hope they don't mind seeing a little blood. A little blood, why's that? You must see, Tim. <laughs> All right, chefs, listen up. The Hmong have invited you to a barbecue where they're gonna show you how to prepare a typical Hmong meal. Now, you're gonna have to pay very close attention because later, you're gonna go off and create an entirely new spin-off dish capturing the spirit of their original menu. Got it? Got it. Got it. Let's go to a barbecue. Let's go. Cool. So with all the Hmong gathered and preparations in full swing, and Jason, John, and Charlie ready to pitch in, the first question of the day was, what makes a Hmong barbecue so different? And with that question settled, it was time for the chefs to roll up their sleeves and get to learn the ways of the Hmong. Back in Laos, we don't have a, this kind of torture, you know, for burning, but we use the bamboo, and then we come and we burn the skin. This is much more efficient, yes? This is faster. Yes. Okay. So what do you dip it in? Just chili and uh, lemongrass, lemon, yeah. uh -huh. and a, a fish sauce. Uh -huh. That sounds delicious. Are we going to have delicious. that today? Are we today? doing that today? We already, my wife's already cooking. Oh, yes, sir. Nice. <laughs> let's get all the food in the buckets. Let's yes. go up to the barbecue area, uh -huh. and let's start this party. Party time! Wow. This is a knife. <laughs> Can yeah. gold butter yeah, out? Yeah, make and sure to all this. Yeah. Mix um, mine up with her so you can't see who <laughs> did what. <laughs> It's really crispy. Yeah. So what is it that, that has got you the so excited? Of the texture. crispiness of it. Yep, texture. I've had these before. But they never crisp up this light like this. They put the rice in the, in the um, blender. Blender. And do you blend it while it is hot or after it cools? Hot. hot. That yes. is then, so killer. Yeah. Chefs, what you have to do? Back to Santa Barbara, into your kitchens, and come up with a spin-off dish that best represents what you feel is the spirit and the essence of what the Hmong have done for us here today. Heck of a day, guys. Really yes. good. <laughs> it's spin-off day, guys. I've got the Hmong waiting in the restaurant. They are going to decide today which one of you three best captures the spirit of what their cuisine is all about whilst you transform it, recreate it, Americanize it, if you will, into upscale restaurant fare. Let's do it! All right, John, what have you got here? This is a sweet and sour glazed wild boar ribs, pickled kohlrabi, 
pickled radish, forbidden rice, and pixie tangerines. And what ties it in to what the Hmong have been talking about over the, the last couple of sour sauce, it's got the mandarins, the radish, the pickles. They had lots of pickles at their dinner, so I just kind of wanted to incorporate that and uh, the kohlrabi native to their land. All right, Jason. This is a spot prawn hot pot. So I tried to incorporate some of the local seasonal produce into this one. I have a uh, sweet corn, dragon beans, and heirloom tomatoes. And it's a crispy rice cake and spot browns. Okay. So I used the Hmong flavors in the broth to tie it all together. But the crispy rice cake was something Very that sick. all the chefs went absolutely ballistic about on the barbecue day. I did kind of tie that one into this. Slightly different, the texture on the inside isn't as gelatinous, it's more as a texture of rice. So we'll see what they think. This looks like an amazing broth. Tell me all about it. I did a pork beef organ broth, and then I put a bunch of the, the Hmong tech flavors into it with ginger and a little bit of cardamom. I have a, a duck and sweetbread ravioli that's in the broth, and I also have some pickled chanterelles, which are locally harvested by myself and my dog. Uh huh. So we go for a walk in the woods and we find chanterelles, and then we basically pickle them up. I did those last year, and so I thought it'd be a great way to again showcase uh, the vibrancy of, of not only our community, but what you can do if you go out and work for it. And that's really what I took, took from the Hmongs, is they're willing to work for their meal. All right, you're good to go? I'm good to go. All right, guys, we are back with the Hmong. I have one question. Did you come hungry? Yes, yeah. we come hungry. <laughs> And with the last plate whisked away, it was time for the Hmong to decide which of the chefs had captured the spirit of their cuisine. All right, Shanine, you ready, chefs? Absolutely. Oh, I'm nervous. Ma, I, you're nervous. Um, I want to hug them first before I announce them. Go, 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 go! Yes. Oh, thank you. Now we are all nervous. <laughs> okay. Hmong, we have kept the chefs waiting long enough, I feel. Shanine. Ready? The winner is? The winner is John. John! It was, a, it was a pleasure cooking for you all. The spirit, that like mold, yeah, you got it. What she did is, is amazing. Just taking an old culture and and just bringing that up to life. The, the name of Hmong, never never been on like I mean on the manual or whatever, like Hmong food. So I think if you keep doing that, it's gonna be you. Okay. Thank you very, very much. This is a pleasure and a real honor. I will see you somewhere across the great fruited plains as we meet another great ethnic group at what is truly the melting pot. <laughs>